Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have the first in what will probably be a new series um, that I'm gonna tentatively call uh, New Tech Test Drive. Um, and in this series, I'm just gonna try to explore, you know, more outside of the norm. So, you know, you have your big giants like Snowflake, you have, uh, you know, Spark, you have Airflow. Um, but what I wanna explore in this series is tech that's a little further down the curve um, that you might not know about that might have a really cool use case um, but just isn't really widely known um, and kind of just give a spotlight to it see if it's actually worth uh, divesting or going away from one of the big uh, giants for one of these type of services um, and the first one that i'm going to be looking at today is a company called tembo and so at a high level, what Tembo wants to do is basically eliminate database sprawl um, and as you see here, say hello to Postgres. Uh, it really is meant to be kind of a developer platform uh, for Postgres for building every kind of data service with the idea that Postgres is so flexible that it can really be adapted for almost any use case you have. So you don't have to have different specialized tools for different use cases. Um, and so they want to collapse that database sprawl and really empower users with a high performance, fully extensible managed Postgres service. Um, and so what we'll do today is just try out their free tier. I'll try to start and explain some of the uh, things that are possible within uh, Tembo and then maybe give you kind of a idea of whether or not this is a good solution for you to use. So to start up, just hit that uh, try, get try free button um, and you can continue with Google. And then once we're in here, we can create an org. So here I'll just hit create org. Just call this data guy org. And then agree to turn the service and hit create. Um, and then we're brought into our dashboard. And so to set up your account, uh, the first thing you're gonna do is actually create an instance of a database. And so here you have a few different options of the Postgres stack within Tembo. Um, so what the stack is here, and this is kind of a key thing to understanding, you know, kind of where Tembo comes into place is each stack here uh, is a pre-built use case specific Postgres uh, environment that allows you to quickly deploy specialized data services um, that can replace, you know, some of those non Postgres services that are more specialized before, um, but instead have it all run via Postgres. So you have kind of a common way of interacting with it. Um, but a stack allows you to have just kind of a pre-specialized version of Postgres. So you don't have to do a lot of that zero to one work. Um, and so just to give you also an idea of the autonomy of a, or anatomy of a stack, it contains a base Docker image, a uh, curated set of extensions for that particular workload. Um, it also will give you the hardware underlying compute that is optimized for that hardware or for that workload. Uh, and then Postgres configs that are optimized again for that hardware. Uh, and then, you know, pre-built alerting and metrics dashboards uh, that give you the most relevant information based on that use case. Um, and so what we'll do here is let's check out a machine learning database here. So we'll select our Postgres database type, and then we will hit next. Um, and we can see here, you can start with George Yates. Um, let's actually we'll call it data guy stack. And then choose a cloud provider, choose your instance type. I'm just gonna use general purpose um, and then set a storage limit. So here we'll just leave it at the kind of defaults here and hit create. And then we'll see we have our database that's being uh, created. So just right now provisioning, um, you'll be able to see the disk usage, everything here. So I'll pause here for a second and just kind of let this spin up and then continue. And so now that it's provisioned, let's try using it. Um, so first of all, what I want to do is check out some of these apps. So these are basically extensions off of this base Postgres environment that allow me to do things like connect to it and trigger uh, events from a remote uh, source. So first you have the RESTful API, um, which I can activate here. Um, and this what we'll do is generate me a bear token uh, that I can then use to execute API commands uh, from a remote source to actually generate tables. Um, so what we'll do first is let's check out uh, creating a table with this curl API. So I'm going to generate this bear token uh, and then switch over to my local development and uh, see what this looks like there. So here, if we just run kind of the example query just to get information around our database, uh, we'll run this with our bear token. And then you'll see we just have all the different information around this particular database. Uh, not super useful, but you know, cool. You can just get it quickly via the API. Um, but why don't we try creating something? So to do that, we'll actually need to go back to the uh, Tembo API and open this connection string here. 
Um, so what we'll do is copy this connection string uh, from here. And so luckily it doesn't even show you the full connection string. So just leave it at that. Um, and then what we can do is just run PS SQL, quick see if we can connect to it and we don't have a user. So to do that, what we'll do is I'm gonna copy this command, uh, P SQL Postgres, your user, your user at uh, Tembo data domain, uh, port 5432 slash Postgres, then we're gonna create a products table. Um, so one sec, let me just hack together that in a little notes doc. Um, so I don't have to edit it in command line and then I'll show you what that looks like running from my local machine. So unfortunately, it looks like I'm running into a bug right now where it says I don't have a Postgres username specified, even though it's uh, clearly specified right here. Um, but whatever, we'll move past that. Um, you can kind of see now that I have a database up and running that I have some memory and CPU consumption. I have some reads and writes here, active connections, uh, longest transaction as well. So it's detecting that I'm trying to connect to the database, but uh, is not letting me for whatever reason. Uh, but some other things to note here. So the extensions that are installed, you can see everything that was installed uh, because we configured this as a machine learning Postgres database. Um, so you have PG cron for job scheduling, PG later, PGML, vector, so you can handle vector data, uh, Python 3, so you can handle you know, doing Python 3 tasks, vectorize, and you also have a list of different extensions here that are installed but are disabled. So these are extensions that you might not necessarily want or need to use right out of the box, but they are here for you to use uh, if you chose to do so. Um, additionally, under settings here, you can you know configure your instance type even after it's been created. You have the option to uh, go in and check different Postgres settings here. Um, and then if I go back to the home page here, you'll see I can go and get all my necessary connection strings. Um, hopefully they work for you. Uh, that will allow you to connect to and manipulate your Postgres database from an external location. Also, additionally, under this extensions tab, you actually have a really cool uh, kind of extensions marketplace here. So if you go from manage extensions uh, down into explore extensions, you can see I can you know look for extensions for change data capture, for data transformation, for orchestration, uh, just giving you a really easy way to kind of mix and match and customize your uh, Postgres Tembo stack however you might see fit. Um, so while you do have these kind of predefined stacks that have been pre-configured for particular workloads, you also have the flexibility to, you know, choose how you want to interact with your actual Postgres database. Um, one of the things here that are kind of notable from a management perspective is you can actually have multiple organizations. So instead of thinking of those organizations, I almost think of them like as team workspaces. So you can see here, you can invite whatever members you might want uh, to share this Postgres uh, database. And then if I go within a particular organization, um, or I can see my own personal account, but then if I go to cloud at Tembo IO, you can see I can see all my active instances. And if I want to create a new instance, let's say for just a Mongo alternative, um, and just want somewhere to store document-based workloads, select this Mongo alternative. Um, and then what we'll do is just create this. And we can see similar instance types, call this just a test. Um, you'll see it's, it's got all the included things it's got within it. Um, and similarly, so, or I guess dissimilarly, the other one, you'll see this actually has much fewer uh, extensions installed alongside of it. Likely because, you know, Forge is a basic Mongo alternative stack. You don't really need a lot of complexity here. Uh, but you still have a lot of the same, you know, the different settings, the home. Uh, you can enable different applications here, like a Postgres REST API. Um, and allow you to connect to it programmatically if you don't run into the same issues uh, that I did. Um, but this is where you will get, you know, really all kind of connection details for this particular environment. Um, you can also check out its connection pooler. So this is a way if you need to kind of manage connections between this Postgres environment and other uh, environments, you can see uh, you'll have the option to, hey, I want to connect to this connection pooler and then define that connection directly into the Tembo Cloud Postgres API. Um, down here, just showing a few more things. So you also have the option to add embeddings to this. Um, so embedding applications just allows you to actually generate embeddings uh, via their API. Uh, hopefully they fix this username password issue. I'm not really sure what's going on there, uh, but here you can, you know, if you connect via Postgres SQL and your username works, uh, you'll be able to create tables via there, just like you would with any SQL um, table and, or SQL database. And then you can also interact with it Pythonically, um, search it from raw text if you want to search for uh, vectorized search. Um, and do everything within vector databases that you would normally be able to do. 
Um, and then finally, you also have the option to enable uh, Postgres or GraphQL. So if you don't like using uh, REST API, you think you, or you have a use case that really requires kind of the object-oriented API request that GraphQL uses, enable this, and you have GraphQL available on your Postgres database. So that is Tembo uh, in a nutshell. Uh, hopefully when we come back to it in the future, maybe they'll, I'll be able to connect to it properly, uh, but just really wanted to kind of walk you through it, give you a sense of what this uh, tool does, if it might be a good fit for you. Um, and yeah, just hopefully this is helpful and this is kind of the start of something new. Um, I know this is a little bit uh, rough at the beginning, but uh, hope you enjoy it. And if you have any other suggestions for tools you'd like to explore uh, that are maybe a little bit le lesser known, please let me know and I'd love to handle them. But above all else, have a good one. Data Guy out.